All right, today we're gonna to do a log review and use the new Betaflight configurator, pit tuning and filter sliders to give some advice. You, you know, you, you would never even know about, there's no way to know about this and address this thing other than logging. There's no way you can feel it. There's no way you can grab the frame and spin up the front and feel 200 Hertz versus whatever. You're just never gonna know. And you'll just know you have hot motors. You won't know why you'll be, lower and PIDs be kind of because of it and you're just never going to get the optimal tune. I don't have time to be guessing about these things and kind of just wandering around with my eyes closed in the woods in the dark and hopefully I don't run into a tree. I want to see it, I want to address it, I want to move on. Okay, like with any log, we want to first get and see where things stand. So let's take a look. Going to the gyro noise plots here, if we look at gyro scaled on roll, pitch, and yaw, and try to just get a sense of the raw noise, uh, it looks pretty good. There's uh, no alarming, um, you know, high amount of noise or anything here. You can see now it's coming up. So you can see the motor band through here. So this is increasing, you know, the hertz of the noise is increasing as the throttle goes up. And this is a, a new, newer plot in the newer uh, Black Box Explorer. And if this is the first time you're seeing this plot and you want to be able to get the same plot just through Black Box Explorer, I'll link to the video in the upper right where I talk about this in a spot where you can download it. The only thing I do see in here, and a little tip for everybody, because I didn't know this for the longest time, but if you hold down shift, you get this little uh, in indicator thing here. I didn't know that until like six months ago and somebody commented on one of the videos. Anyways, if I hold that down, you can see that there's a, a spike around 208, 209 hertz, and it seems to be irregardless of throttle. So even at, you know, down at 20% throttle, it's there. At 100% throttle, it's there. So that's a frame resonance thing. So the only way to address that is with a static notch, hence why the static notches are in Betaflight. Um, so we'll, we'll get that built into the advice. Uh, rest seems normal here. So you're seeing this is the, the, the motor band. And this is where the RPM filter and dynamic notch would be tracking this to, to squash this out as we go along. Uh, let's take a look at the pitch access. Pitch access again looks pretty good here. And y'all, nothing alarming here. You can kind of see that bleeding over from the pitch or this uh, little bit of resonance going on here. That's irregardless of throttle position. And then this uh, here as well. So let's, uh, we'll take that into account. Let's look at the filtered noise now. So to look at the filter, I just go right down to the D term. So this would be trace setup nine in the UAV tech trace setup templates. And if you go down to the bottom here, you'd see the D on roll and D on pitch. D term is really the only term that really is sensitive to the noise at all. Uh, I term doesn't, doesn't impact I whatsoever. For the P term, you'd have to have really high amplitude uh, noise for it to really impact the P term because it's only proportional to it so it's not like it magnifies it. The D term definitely magnifies any noise and the higher the frequency the more it magnifies it. The D term you know can magnify any noise you know when you get up to the higher frequency 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz by 10 to 100 times or plus so it, it and really that that high frequency noise it will amplify the heck out of it so something that's you know, not really high in magnitude, just a little bit of squiggles. If it's high in frequency, the D term will make that small little amplitude squiggles huge because it's just how it works. The higher the frequency, the more it amplifies it. So it's kind of the opposite of a low pass filter, hence why we use low pass filters uh, to kind of counteract that. So clicking on to the D on roll, you can see it's attenuating everything, and this is the full flight, attenuating everything really well, except for that spike right there at the 209, whatever area there. So let's look at pitch. And pitch, you can see we don't have that, so pitch is looking pretty good. It's just on the roll axis, something right at uh, 209 hertz at some, you know, it, 
regardless of throttle, but obviously it's more after 50% uh, throttle. It's making the roll axis shake back and forth 209 to 210 times per second. So that, that's really fast. And you can see it's anywhere, it's, it's even down here, 20, below 20% throttle, but really from you know 35% throttle all the way up to 100, that's occurring no matter what. So we, the only thing we can do is, it's a mechanical thing, I don't know what it would be. You could go through the exhaustive effort of trying to fix it mechanically, uh, which is the best, but um, until you do that, it depends how far the, down that rabbit hole you wanna go. Until you do that, the best thing to do for this is the just put a static notch on top of that. Before we jump over, let's look at what the filter setup is here. So you can see we have the dynamic notch turned on, and this quad has the RPM filter turned on as well. Now I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to go with a hunch that it has the three harmonics, so it's 12 fil uh, notches per axis, which is, is quite a bit. So we'll probably look at reducing that some. The dynamic notch is good, so I'm sure he's doing some work. So really our goal is with either the dynamic notch or the RPM notches to take care of this throttle band noise that comes up through here. So that's what the notches are for. We want to use static notches for anything like this if we see any frame resonance. Now keep it in mind, less is more for filtering. So we try to want to minimize our filtering as much as we can but when we see certain things like you know this band, if we're not hitting it, then we should be thinking RPM filter, dynamic notch, those kind of things. What do we need to do there? If we see some you know consistent resonance where it's regardless of throttle, well, that means we want to be thinking static notch, put a static notch on top of that. If we see just a bunch of dispersed noise, just a bunch of red out here and red in between, you know, kind of red in between this area here and this over here. If we just see a bunch of red here or red down here, you'll see that a lot. Then we should be thinking low pass filters. So that's how the scheming of filtering all works, you know, between the notches, the dynamic ones, the static ones, and then the low passes themselves. So firing back into here, we have one low pass filter, low pass two at 300 hertz. So essentially that's almost the same or just about the same as no low pass filters on the gyro, which is, which is good um, because less is more. So that's what we wanna go with there. And you can see here we have a PT1 filter that is dynamic and it's ranging from 200 to 300 hertz. And then we also have another one at 270. So that's pretty light uh, D-term filtering. And it's, you know, this is a competitive racing rig and he really wants to have the least amount of filtering possible, the least amount of latency as possible. So he's he's really trying to go for, you know, an aggressive filter and PID tune on this thing. What would we do here to in, improve upon what we already have here, which is, which is looking pretty good. So to step into that, we're gonna use the new Betaflight configurator with the filter sliders, because I think it's really the way to go moving forward. And you can see in here, what we wanna try to do is stick with the filter sliders just because of ease of use. Uh, you can go down here and customize things as much as you want manually, just like you could always, but it's just more complicated. So let's stick with the filter sliders. Let's keep it simple. What I would do, honestly, for the amount of filtering he has on the gyro signal, it's uh, you could probably move the filter slider all the way up, and that would be about the equivalent. Uh, this gyro slider moved all the way up is still about a half a millisecond of phase delay, and we're really trying to get that down as low as possible. However, that would uh, require a little bit more D-term filtering. In general, you want to try to keep these sliders together. Uh, the only reason there's two of them is because the gyro filters, uh, these down here, are independent of your profile. So whatever you change on your gyro filter, that's going to be the same for profile 1, 2, or 3. Hopefully that will change in the future, but that's how it is now in Betaflight 4.1. It will be. For the D-term filter, these are profile dependent. So you could have profile 1 have a certain slider position and profile 2 have a different slider position. So you can see they needed to do that from the computer standpoint just because of the, the how it is. So what I would recommend on this, and there's some experience behind this, but I want to try to not make I want to try to get about the equivalent filtering but I want to keep in the slider regime now as you can see before we had one PT1 on the gyro at 300 Hertz so we're about 300 Hertz and it's gonna move north and this is the 375 so you can kind of see where I'm getting that 
thing. There's actually more filtering now here. You're, this is going to move up, but this is going to this is going to stay at 375, and it's it's not going to move up, but it's a little higher than 300. So we're trying to strike that balance to get about the same here. It's it's actually going to be a little bit more filtering than what we have set here. However, we're going to move up the D term a little bit as well. I, the D terms on this rig, I'd like to see a little bit higher D terms. He's down at like 15s for the gains, and I I think that's a little light for prop wash handling and things of that nature. So. Keeping in mind, we're about to move the D gains up. That means likely to have a kind of a balance. We need a slightly little bit more filtering uh, because those gains are going to make the uh, D term amplify the noise even more. So we have to kind of suppress that noise before it gets to the D term uh, to begin with. And then the D term, really just to keep them in line with each other, uh, I'm going to move that up to the same spot. We're going to see how that goes. So maybe it needs to be a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Uh, we're trying to, to do two things here. We're trying to give some advice and we're trying to also can kind of convert this into a slider routine where it's uh, a lot simpler to navigate, give advice, work back and forth, things of that nature. The other thing we're definitely going to do here is turn on one of these static notches, set this at 209 and then set this at 190. The other thing is the 190. You, you know, you might come over here and say, well, you could make that 200. The higher the the cutoff, the better that the, the phase delay that this, you know, this notch is going to give. It's not so much based on the center, it's based on this, this lower cutoff. So yeah, bringing that up to 200, but it's not, you got to be about 10 hertz below where you see the noise stop. So the noise kind of stops here. I would go another 10 hertz or 20 hertz below, below that spot to really make sure you hit it. The notches get pretty narrow, so you'll see if you make it too narrow, you'll see that you're killing it. You know, it's totally going to kill this noise completely right at the center. That's the advantage of notch filters. Right at the absolute center of a notch filter, there will be zero, absolutely zero noise gets through. But on either side, if they're not wide enough, you'll see it kind of leak out either side. So we want to make it plenty wide that we hit this resonance. And then, you know, if we wanted to narrow it up later, that's you kind of getting to the nth degree. This the the amount of phase delay with a static notch that this that's this small is is pretty low. Uh, it's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 milliseconds of phase delay. And you can use my Excel sp spreadsheet to look for yourself, but I'm not too worried about it. And it's going to be a lot more gains just getting rid of this to begin with. Okay, coming back to this. So then again, we would just set this. Let me let's just do 208. That looked a little bit better there, and we'll just round it off to 190. That's fine. And that would be my advice to give this a shot for that setup. Okay, so that is going to do it for the filter part. I'm going to cut the video here because it gets a little bit long if you put both the pit tuning and the filter together. Uh, good news, as of today, the filter slider addition was merged into the Betaflight Master. The new Betaflight configurator should come out in the next week or so, uh, it would be 10.6, would get a notification on your existing configurator to upgrade it once that's out in stable release. If you want to jump on it, you can find the new configurator in, it's still in beta, uh, and it's, there's still stuff being added, so it would be something you would just download temporarily, but if you go to tiny.cc forward slash UAV tech, there's a beta configurator folder there. You could download it, unzip that file, just put it on your desktop somewhere, and you can run the new configurator from that location until the stable release comes out, and then your installed configurator, you again get that message to go download it and install the stable release one of it. The pit tuning portion of this video is done, so that should come out in the next day or so. In there we will look at the tune, and then we will talk about how we would adjust the sliders here with that tune, kind of mimicking the existing tune with it and then some tweaks based on the recommendations you know just by looking at the log and seeing some of the overshoot things of that nature thanks again everybody and i hope this helped